Now calling RCP 2023-000093, Derek Kirk versus Lance Kohler. Would the Adverse Party state his name for the record? Lance Arthur Kohler, Jr. Good afternoon, Mr. Kohler. You haven't seen Mr. Kirk anywhere in the courthouse, or? Not that I, I'm not paying attention, honestly. Um, it's one of these things where I never made the phone call. He was calling and harassing my 11-year-old daughter okay. when I answered the phone after the five or six no call or no answers. The phone belongs to, and she's legally still my wife. We've been separated for eight years. We've been married for nine. He was her boyfriend at the time a year ago. He assaulted her, assaulted her mother. My kids were hiding in closets and underneath beds calling the sheriff's department. He spent a year in jail over the situation, not only for the domestic violence behalf, but also a violation of his parole orders. <coughs> when he got out two months ago, he started issuing temporary restraining orders against anybody and everybody that has anything to do he with it. He doesn't issue them, the court issues them. He applied for them. I didn't know he was going to literally push harassment legally this way. Because legally by doing this, what he is now doing is he has legal rights to now harass my current wife and children. Well, if you'd like, I can set this for another hearing and order him to be here. Yeah, that would be great. Ms. Clark, let's set it for a merit hearing and yes, tell him sir. I'm ordering him to be here. Yes, sir. Maybe we can put a stop to it. I would like to hear his behalf as to what it is that I... Because he filed this basically under oath in my... As far as I'm concerned. It, uh, I can tell you right now, the address he has listed is his residence. The owner of the house right. is my wife's father, who right. is also a... All right, you're going to have to come back, too. That's fine. We're going to set it for I've been here since 8 o'clock this morning. On this case? Yeah, oh, well, different cases. Side on behalf of my girlfriend, or my ex-wife's okay. new boyfriend that she's been with, who he pressed charges against All right, him. because if these are illegal and false, then I want them stopped, so. Well, that's the Let's do a merit hearing. We'll, we'll change this to a merit hearing. To point where that temporary protection. Emotional damage right now. That temporary protection order is dissolved, and you can tear it up and do whatever you want with it. It's no longer in effect as of this hearing. And I will go ahead and issue what's called a merit hearing. I mean, there's no protection order in place. He's to come in, we're going to order him to come in under a contempt of court bench warrant if he like doesn't appear. I would reverse it and get a restraining order against him for my You're, children. I'm not here for that, sir. I, you I can do what you want if you want to apply well, that, for that. That's, fine. that's not I'm what sorry. a protection order is for. Protection order is not against that type of harassment. It's when there's some type of violence and the court needs to step in he to keep a breach of the peace. You can look at his record. One of his last cases was... Sir, stop talking, please. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to calm down. Sorry. You just won't let me talk. I let you talk. You went on and on and on, even though he's not even here, and it was you were going to win by default anyway. But every time I get three words out, you want to interrupt me, just like you just tried to again. Just stop talking, all right? Sorry. I'm going to set it for a merit hearing. We'll go ahead, and he'll have to, by order of the court, be present to show why there's merit and how there's merit to these claims, because these are pretty serious claims. I agree with you on that. And if he can't do so, I'll tell him that he's not going to have the access to the courts anymore. We might have him declared a vexatious litigant. You, though, only you can take action if you want to get a temporary protection order, if you think it, you qualify for that, or if you want to sue him or go after him for any defamation of character or um, malicious prosecution. But I can't do that. All I can do is say I deny him the temporary protection order and declare him a vexatious litigant where he can't apply for any more temporary protection orders against you. That's all I'll probably have the grounds to do um, at this hearing. How far out would we have to set that? So we, do we have we don't have to get them served. We just have to notify them. So yes. we could do it next week. We could. We yeah. could do it next Thursday, the 6th at one thirty. You got that? I will be here. All right. So you're ordered to be here. We'll get him ordered to be here. The clerk will take care of that. One thirty next week. I look forward to seeing you then. Okay. Thank you, sir. Do I need anything from you guys? Not a bit, I don't I think. think. As long as you know the date and time. Uh, I just do we have you, do we have your email? Uh, no, oh. we do not. There's a form right downstairs on the first floor. Since you were here in court, we can fill it out for you to show you when you were in court. Okay. That way you can provide that to your boss. Okay, so just let them know downstairs. Yep, yeah. on that okay. first floor okay. of the civil division. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. You too. Now calling RCP 2023-000093, Derek Kirk versus Lance Kohler Jr. Would the applicant state his name for the record? Derek Kirk. Would the address party state his name? Lance Arthur Kohler Jr. Thank you. One moment. I have two calendars for stalking and harassment. I'm on the right one. Okay. Okay. Now, Mr. Cole, you were here last time, right? Correct, sir. Mr. Kirk, you were not, right? 
That's correct. And Ms. Clerk, you might want to double check and see if he checked the box that he's requesting an extended protection order, Mr. Kirk. Mr. Kirk, you didn't appear last time. That was what I believed your request that you wanted an extended protection order. Ms. Clerk's going to double check it and see that you checked that box. If you check that box and you don't show up, that sends red flags up to me because you requested an extended protection order and then you didn't even show up. I also don't understand your exhibits that you've submitted, but we'll go over that in a minute. I just, you have to put them in context for me. I don't know what they mean. Um, Mr. Kohler showed up and he told me that you have a tendency to do this to him and, and or other people and that your claims are false. So today, the tide has turned. The, the, foot, the shoe's on the other foot today. It's your burden. He doesn't have to show me anything today. You've already lost your extended protection order when you didn't show up last month. He won by default. But now he brought up another issue then. That's why I called you both into court today. How do you prove to me that any of your claims are true? You didn't bring in the son, right? Was it a nine-year-old son that was in the car? No, sir, it's not my child. It's my child. My, yeah, but you didn't bring in, I don't care whose child it is. He's not here. So you can subpoena any witness you want, even a child. So the child's not here. So do you have any other witnesses to anything you claimed in your, in your application? Yes, that's the exhibits that I filed. And there is a reason why I didn't show up. Go ahead. Um, he has not been served. Well, come to find out, uh, as of yesterday, I found out he was served. But Lyon County does it a little bit differently than Washoe County does. Washoe County, my experience is that they file an affidavit in the court. I was here on the 29th for two separate matters, and I asked the clerk downstairs, and she said that, uh, no, he has not been served. So then I contacted Lyon County, and they said, yes, they did. However, they do it differently. I'm supposed to go out there at Urington to pick it up and then bring it back down here. I was not aware of that. I figured if he hasn't been served, why show up? He is correct, sir. We did never receive proof of service, but the adverse party showed up for the hearing. We wouldn't have a hearing, though, if there's not affidavit but the service. the adverse party showed up. That's why we went forward, sir, because obviously the adverse party was served, but we didn't know that. Until My apologies, Mr. Kirk. Mr. Kohler, I said a lot of things at the last hearing that I want to retract. Because that's a whole different story. If he thought that he wasn't to appear um, because the service had not been executed, and that's not even within his hands, that's within the sheriff's hands to execute the service. So he was told, and we were told, that there was no service. So in which case, the case should have gone off. It shouldn't have been, on, it shouldn't have been held. It shouldn't have been called, the hearing. But because you showed up, Somehow you found out some other way, the time and date, other than being served. served or, or now there was service, we're finding out. I think it's Kirk, Mr. Kirk said it turned out there was service. Um, so it's a mistake. We're, we're back to a, a, a they had served me inadvertent exactly. mistake. What? They had served me exactly seven days before the court date. It was exactly the Right, but Mr. Kirk has just told me why, and because the clerk just told me the same thing, that both Mr. Kirk and the, clerk, the court uh, were under the impression that there was no valid service. If he was validly served seven days before, does that mean Yarrington Sheriff didn't tell us, right? Or didn't well, notify us? They usually won't submit it to us, sir. They'll usually make it the applicant's responsibility to get that service to provide to the court. They usually don't automatically file with us. So did, we don't why did it take so long for you to receive it, do you think, Mr. Kirk? You know, I, I was, like I said, I was here on the 29th for two separate matters completely unrelated to this. And I, while I was here, I, I saw my calendar, I had that on the 30th, so I went down and asked the, the clerk, and she said he has not, still not been served. So I made that decision that I know it can't proceed, so I decided not to just not show up. Now, I did but call, you didn't even, I called you did the sheriff call. after that. No, but why didn't you at least call the court? Call the court? Yeah, to was, let us know, because you had a hearing set. So right? Should, That's what was on the service, the, the right. date and time of the hearing. I mean, you know, I did, I did, I was talking with the clerk down there, the uh, blonde with, uh, with glasses downstairs about it. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think I told her that I'm, I might not appear. Yeah, because you had a hearing set, a court order for both of you to be here. I, 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 that's my mistake. I, I, and I do so he did request next. extended in the he application, did. yes, I would imagine from what he's saying. If, if All have, right, the let me cut to the chase then. All right. Let me cut to the chase then. We're all here now. Let's see if we can get something accomplished. So, Mr. Kohler, I'm taking back the things that we did and that we said back um, a month ago. However, I'm not going to prejudice either party by making a ruling today if it prejudices either party. No, nobody, I believe, showed up to, to do the hearing today. The hearing today wasn't for the extended protection order because that was dissolved a month ago. 
The hearing today was for Mr. Kirk to show cause why he should not be held in contempt, as you remember, based upon your allegations. All right, so we have a, a fight going on here between the two of you. Um, you don't get along, I understand that. Mr. Kirk, what does this picture mean? There's a picture of two little chairs here in front of the building. What does that mean? Is there something damaged? I don't know what this picture means. Uh, there, it's, there's a reason for that. I wasn't sure what was alleged against me because I wasn't here, so I brought lots of proof to prove that I was there to prove that uh, Mr. Kohler does not live at that residence. Okay, tell me what this picture means. Um, which picture? Well, you submitted it. You only submitted, it, I think, one picture and then the Can video. I speak real quick, Your Honor? What? Can I speak real quick? Uh, yeah, real quick, but in a minute, real quick. Uh, the I said real that... quick. No, I'm sorry. I meant in a minute, real quick. Sorry. I'm trying to turn this your way. Can you see the picture? I've yeah, blown it up. It's your that, picture. That, what that, does it mean? That is a, that is a broken window that is oh. his ex wife. That what? The house that she, she, she and his children are no longer allowed at that residence. Well, who broke the window? Uh, his ex wife. Well, then how can I use that against him? Uh, I, thought, I thought they were going to be alleging against me. I'm just trying to prove What's alleged know. against you by Mr. Kohler last time we were here is that you make false claims. Right. And I so the claims that you made in your, in your affidavit are what we're looking to see if there's any proof of it. I don't know what this picture means. It doesn't mean anything if it's your ex-wife that broke the window. Third, okay, so we can, we can move past that if we're not talking about residents. Um, as for we're talking about whatever, whatever you alleged in your claim. Me, that, that is on a video. That, that is on, on that. I, video. Okay, one video I couldn't hear very well at all, and I couldn't tell who was talking. It's like you put a, a camera a phone on a table, right, and surreptitiously recorded him. Is that what happened? No, I was correct. I was, no, I was in my vehicle when his ex-wife made a phone call to me. Uh, sir, he no. was calling her and my 11-year-old daughter. Okay, let him finish. That's not correct. Go it's ahead, Mr. Kirk. You can, you can Mr. Kirk, please don't talk to each other. Go ahead. Okay, the video does depict uh, my phone ringing four or five times before I answer it. I'm not talking about the one in your vehicle. That's what you're talking about. Yes. I'm talking about the one where there's a fish on the wall. It's in the house. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's and it looks like you put the phone down, press the camera, press video, and then got him to come in or something, and there was this discussion. And that was, that was with the owner. Yeah, I didn't know who he was. I saw a face, but I don't know if it's Mr. Also, Cohen. Also, has to do with the residents, not, not Mr. Cohen. Then it means nothing to me. Okay. I, I want, what proof do you have of the allegations you made in your affidavit? The video that's, that's dark, where I was in my vehicle, and my dash cam recorded it. That's the phone call. Okay, that's which, I don't know which exhibit it is. Ms. Clark, do you know which exhibit he means? That would be... That quite, I'm pulling up quite a video. There's uh, some audio, sir. I know. I don't know which one. Yeah. yeah because I pulled them all up in my chambers, and I saw a video, but I don't know which one he's referring to. Something about one in a vehicle. It's the one that's uh, right in the main file. Says Lance Kohler. Says the date sure time one. one. Outside of the folder. Where you press and play? Oh, boy, this is totally different than my computer. I don't know if it'll pull up. We have. We may have to. I have the flash drive, sir. So we may not have. All right, go ahead with what you wanted to say, Mr. Kohler. The address that he has listed, that is my children's address to their grandparents. That's not what I'm here to decide. I understand that, but that's the address that he's putting down as me not allowed there. My I know, but that has nothing to do with what house. That might have to do with some false claims. I agree. We'll get to that. But I wanna, I'm want i more concerned with the merits of the, the issue involved here. Correct. The claim he made that you were threatening. Um, if I had made any threats towards him, it was after I had asked him repeatedly to leave my wife and children alone. And she what did you threaten? What wife. did you threaten? I don't honestly recall. He's got it on a, on a recording I, here, I, I guess. I don't remember. Honestly, I was at home. It was 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, it's one thing to say he threatens you, Mr. Kirk, but not if you were bothering him. I don't know about next wife, but his children. Current wife, sir. Or wife, okay, wife and or Nine children. So is it his ex-wife? No. No. You, they he, dated for about six months. I heard ex-wife. Didn't you say ex-wife? He says it's my ex-wife. Oh. I'm totally confused. All right, so it's your current wife that he used to date? Correct, sir. All right. About a year ago. And you and your wife have children together? Correct. And how long have you known her? 19 years. How long have you dated her? Uh, we dated for 10 years. How long, have you, for how long have you been years. married to her? Nine years now. So how could he have dated her then? We were separated. Oh, okay. That's why he's saying X. Okay, I get it. 
Miss Quick, this came up. I don't know what to do with it. Do you? Or, I can. Oh, we still. Are you trying to play it over there? Yes. All right, we're trying to find the one in the car. You don't know which exhibit number this is? I have like eight. I have eight exhibits. So which one do you want me to pull up? Okay, it's the one that says, uh, do you have the names on it? I don't know if they put existing numbers. No, the clerk just it put is. plaintiff's exhibit. It's a video that's uh, 30 megabytes. 30 megabyte video. And this is a video that the child was in the car also? Um, I think that was just, that, that was with a separate person. You see, there's a whole totality of circumstances that happen here with that Mark Choinsky guy that you put on house for us last week. Uh, his neighbors were going to come up before the next week. They had tried to run a vehicle into me, and I have that on video. I have uh, damaged my car that same day. You can't prove he damaged the car. What proof do you have? I'm sure the police didn't arrest him for it if you filed the police report. I think you did. Not, sure. not, not Mr. Cole. This, this is separate. This is what? You have no I proof have he, he damaged your car. I do have, I have a video of it. Video of the car? Not of him doing it. I, I do. I, I do have a video of, of a man jumping out in front of my car, swinging a two-by-four, uh, throwing it out of my vehicle. He was arrested, and you, you put him on house arrest. He is currently on it now. He For destruction of property? Okay, so it wasn't one of these where you wake up in the morning, you see damage to your car, and you blame it on him. No, I've wasn't seen the totality of circumstances. So, sir, uh, you you were convicted of the destruction of property, his no, property. It was not different. What? Different that was a different person. That oh yeah, I heard you say I put somebody on house arrest, but it wasn't him. Her, her, so her, I I'm her, asking her, about her, him. You keep bringing up all these other people. Okay, it's the totality of the circumstances. No, it isn't. Stop saying that. Okay. No, it isn't. You can't just say I assume it because of the totality of the circumstances. What proof do you have that he damaged your vehicle? That, that's, that's, okay. Look, that's why I said a minute ago, you don't have up. it. Let me back up. No, I do have the video here. Of him swinging the board? No, 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 that's different. Okay. I don't care about this Here's, other person. The first thing I wanted, to, I wanted to say, I'm just trying to get to it, is that um, given everything that happened, that's why I jumped to get a restraining order. I've uh, never had a problem with Mr. Kohler. In fact, as far as I can see, he's a good father, and that means a lot to me. Um, so I was really shocked when he said he was going to kill me and bury me in his front yard. But that wasn't recording, right? It, it, that is on recording. Did you say that? I, if I did, Your Honor, I do not remember. Like I said, I, it was... It's I, recorded. I understand. So I, is it, was, it possible? It was recorded is without it possible? my acknowledgments. And literally, I had no idea that Well, he yeah, was you can't record anything, on a phone without his consent. Especially when he was literally harassing her before I took the phone away while right. both my children are sitting on couches in my living room crying because he is harassing them. It I still doesn't the give you a right her. to threaten him. I, I understand that, and I, 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 right. I told him Mr. I was Kirk, not threatening Federal him. law and state law. Two-party consent. You cannot... In the recording, you, that I was not threatening him. I was asking him very nicely, repeatedly, to leave my wife Oh, and so you do remember. Her. I said... You do you, remember. I, I remember bits and pieces, but what I was the threat? Everything. What was the threat? He said that I'm going to kill you. Kill you in the front yard. I never said that to anybody. He was clearly drunk. He, he yeah, never said that to anybody. Drunk, I was in my own residence. He's never said that to anybody. So if I hear it on the recording, and it's your voice. It, like I said, if I did say it to him, it was out of literally spite. You just said you've never on. said it to anybody. I've never said that to anybody. But if I did, it was because I was under the. Well, these stand up, please. I don't like what I'm hearing. Raise your right hands. Do each of you solemnly swear the testimony brought to you the court should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Have a seat. Mr. Kohler, you can't say, I've never said that to anybody, but if I did say it... I do not recall. Do you, do you see the inconsistency yes, in that? I do you say that to me under oath, you're committing perjury. I understand that, sir. Now, what I'm asking, is it possible that this is on a recording that's your voice? Yes. All right, then it's probably this. this evening. I just remember my children preaching. I don't care. It's a threat. You don't have a right to make a threat. Children. You I don't. Ha that. still don't have a right to threaten somebody. Mr. Kirk, With you don't have a right to record on somebody's phone call without their consent. In That's a vehicle. felony. I was in my vehicle and it, it's always recording when I'm in my vehicle. You're not hearing me. Okay. Does he know? Did you tell him you're recording him? No. Then that's not consent. I don't care if it's always recording. That's not consent just because you happen to always be recording. You have to tell the person and actually get their consent. That's a felony. You've just committed a felony by recording his phone call. It's a class D felony. Um, all right, so we got garbage all over the place, gentlemen. Now, Mr. Kirk, so 
that threat, I believe you're probably going to be able to to prove up, even Almost. though he gives me a pretty stern reason why he threatened you. Because you're bothering his kids. So, they're not your kids, right? No, no I was not harassing anybody. All right, well, what I'm getting at is, do you have any um, custody rights over these kids at all? Do you no. drive them to school? Do you do anything for the mother to help out? Anything like that? Not, not anymore, no. No. So why would you be doing anything to the kids that he could consider? That's, I did nothing to the children. Harassment. His, his wife called me. Were you ever over there with the children? Yeah, we, we lived there. I lived at the house with him. We helped, helped raise him for a time. With him and her? No. With the children. Oh, with them. The you children. know, all this being said. No, that's past. I'm, I'm talking about right. more not, currently. Not, 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 yeah, I'm not going that. I'm not going the that far. Being said, what I was trying to get at is that I, I don't want to proceed with the, the restraining order. I, uh, okay. At the time, due to the totality, like I was saying, with everything going on, I felt really threatened at that time. I had all sorts of people. There's like four or five restraining orders that took place all in one week. Everybody attacking me with vehicle damage. Someone trying to run at me with a vehicle. Him threatening me, he's going to kill me. So I jumped to, to restraining orders. At this time, with with Mr. Kohler, I, I think he is a good, decent buff. I uh, never had a problem with them up until that point. Nothing has happened since then. It's been over a month. So uh, I'm fine with uh, discontinuing the restraining order. All right, Mr. Kohler, he's not seeking the extended protection order. I'm glad we had this hearing because I'm also not satisfied with what you told me 30 days ago, that everything he said was false. He makes these things up. Because I believe if I listen to this recording, you probably said these things that he's willing to prove up here today. That like you said, don't remember that you may have said. I don't what? remember. I remember being upset over everything that was going on. Literally, she's in one bedroom. I have a 2,200 square foot house. I'm in the master bedroom on one end. She's at the complete other end. I can hear her yelling at him, please leave me alone. Please stop calling me. Okay, then, you get, then she gets a temporary protection order. You don't threaten him. I understand that, and I told her that's what she needed to do at that point. Then why did you threaten him? If I, you did, I honestly, Your Honor, I was at home. I was drinking. It was my Friday night. Okay. I if you tell somebody you're going to kill him and bury him in the front time. yard, I will grant a protection order against you every time. I understand. So it's that. not false. All right. Well, that's why it's not false. So I'm telling you because that's what he said. You said, and it's probably on the recording, but it doesn't matter because you said you can't remember. So it's probably there. It doesn't matter. He's not seeking the extended protection order today. The temporary protection order does not go on your record. It's dissolved. It's already gone. And there is no extended protection order. So nothing goes on your record. Maybe it's good we had these little hearings with you two, so maybe we can get something accomplished. You're still married to her. You're living with her and your children, correct? They have been staying with my parents at six miles down the road. They've been there since she got out of jail, what was it, five months ago, Kaysa? And what was she in jail for? Uh, traffic violations she didn't okay. have money to pay so she went in due time okay served. and why are you separated from them though them right now well you said they're staying there you're staying somewhere else i live in my house yeah and they're staying there so my why is what I'm my asking. mother offered that it's a cab over camper and literally my, i drop my kids off at my parents house when i go to work right well, was there any day. part of this protection order that kept you from seeing your wife or kids no no, so why are you guys just agreeing to live separately? Yeah, until we can make better arrangements okay. together. Okay. It's one of those things that we're, we're, we're working on trying to make a better life for our yeah, kids. Yeah, I'm not going to get in the middle of that. You have every right to it. I just wanted to find out what, because if you guys are separated, if it's a legal separation, you guys are both agreeing to it, then he may be dating her. And I'm not saying it I, could be anybody. It might not be him. It might be somebody else. I don't care who she's with. If, she's if she with wants her. to get a protection order, then she can get one. You don't need to protect her, and you certainly can't threaten people. It wasn't mainly against just her. It's a protection of my children. That's the only concern. I tell everybody on a daily basis what she does on her free time and her own priorities. That's on her. I do not control her. I never have. Right. I never will. However, but what was he doing to your children? children? What was he doing to your children at the time you threatened him? Uh, when he got to spend this last year in jail, it was over basically battery against her, her mother, and a roommate in the house. Basically, what got her in a little bit of trouble over it was what he was got to do with the children. He was going after my son, who was hiding in the closet that day. How old is your son? He is eight years old. Mr. Kirk, did you suffer he criminal prosecution for that case? Both of my did. kids. And you did a year. Traumatized. You did a year in jail. Not related to that. I was on parole for something unrelated. If that case was dropped, uh, did zero days in jail on it. Uh, you know, uh, 
well, not a time sir, but eight hours. Uh, All right, but you know what he's talking about, about, so. about harassing a nine-year-old? Eight-year-old, nine-year-old? That, that's, that, that's completely false. She was actually charged with it by CBS. Right. Well, she was not. You're not, seeing her any, you're not seeing her anymore? No, I'm not. So he said charged by CPS, not by the court. And that, it's not that's CPS. not really the charge, but they accused her of it. And, and in this video, you can hear her saying that I was lucky she, she didn't hurt me more. All right. So you're out of the picture. You're not involved with these people anymore, correct? Not with them, but with with her, with the, the grandparents of the, the grandparents of on the mother's side. I am because I'm very good friends. Uh, her father is like also an ex felon. He's he's like a father figure to me. All right. Yeah, so well, I'd so feel I'm, better I'm, if you I'm two. There, I was there last night. I'd feel better if you two didn't have a reason to see each other. So what's going to happen when you're over there and? He or she or the kids come over. You know, I, I just want peace with everybody. I know, but I'm wondering if we're going to have peace. My Are we going to have peace when you guys leave this courtroom? I, I want no, I have no ill feelings for him. I think he's a great father. Yeah, well, but I, you know, if I the just, two I of you get together in a room together, Spanish, I, if you are harassing, if he feels you are harassing his children, we're going to be I back would, in the I would same never boat. Children. I would never harass them. I don't all right. Want all I do, Mr. Kohler, is residence. is let the extent protection order go. He's not seeking it anyway, and I'm not really planning to rule on it because I already dismissed it a month ago. Thank so you. he'd probably have to file a new. I'm just trying to nip this in the bud so neither one of you has to file for protection orders anymore, and so there's no more problems. So all I can do is give you a little lecture, almost like your father, just telling you to be good. Um, I don't know what more I can do. You two both have. A, experience with the criminal justice system, it seems like, so it worries me that one or both of you are going to start something again. And then I'll have to deal with it, Mr. Kirk, Mr. Kohler. So unless you guys have some ideas, that's about all I can do, because you guys are, you may still see each other. Reno's a small town, and he may be over at the grandparents' house. I don't live in Reno, sir. I work in Reno. Well, where do you live? Silver Springs. Lane okay, County. but still all close, all northern Nevada. And, li and working in Reno, you're still in town. He's at the grandparents' house because you're friends with the grandfather? Yes. And he has every right to go there. I can't stop, stop him from going there. So if you don't want to see him, don't go there. If you don't want to see him so much, don't go there. There's no other places you guys should run into each other? I mean, it could happen. I mean, I, I, it's not, I don't, I don't know of any places that we can bring cross paths. All right, well, I hope one of you is mad enough to walk the other way if you guys do yeah. run into each other, so there's no problems. He's trying to throw the olive branch out and tell you you're a good father. Remember that. I am a good father. I know. Well, he's, he's, con he's conceding it. He's acknowledging it. And that, that, that means a lot to me. All right. So hopefully the kids will be raised well by you and your wife. Um, but I don't want to see further problems, so just remember, he's not seeking the extended protection order. He thinks you're a good father. If you guys see each other, you don't have to talk to each other. Just turn the other way. Probably be the easiest way to keep the peace. Okay? Anything else today, Mr. Kirk? No. Mr. Kohler, I'm not going to find that he's filed malicious charges. Um, I'm not going to hold him in contempt. Anything else today? No, Your Honor. All right. We'll let you guys go. Um, the bailiff will escort one of you out first. But Mr. Why don't we take Mr. Kirk? I'll let you go. Hello. You never defended yourself, Derek. I told you to leave the whole fucking time. The whole fucking time you were there, I told you to fucking leave my house. Otherwise, Derek, I would have broke your nose. I would have broke your face. I choked you out at some point, and everything else was restraining you. Mom told you to leave. I told you to leave. I told you not to eat. I didn't do shit for you to come there. You said, I don't give a fuck if your kids are there. I'm coming there to cause a scene. Did you not? Even though all I said to you was, Derek, I don't have money now, and you know it. Derek, I'll pay you when I get paid next week. Derek, knock it off. I have no one to call. I don't have money. I'll pay you in a week. Right? You didn't quit. You said you didn't give a fuck. My kids were there. You were coming anyway. Stop 
lying about shit, Derek, and you fucking followed me to the camera the other night. Uh, why Kaza, are you I, lying? I did why? not. I did why not follow you, Kaza. You tell me why you're lying. About what? Let's one thing at a time. One thing at a time. I'm not lying about no, anything. I'll tell you the truth. No, all of it at once. No, no, you're lying. Stop with your lies. Well, uh, what do you want me to? I'll tell you the truth about whatever. Shoot. I was not following you all the other day. Lies. You were behind you were, me. You were not defending yourself. You're a liar. I pulled into the parking lot before you, you fucking liar. I, okay. I pulled into the first one. Kaza, you it was. into the second one. Oh my god, Kaza, it was. Kaza, I've been sleeping, I've been sleeping in my car at Tamarack and for the last couple of weeks and Doug knows that. It was, it was co coincidental because I've been sleeping there all week. In, in a couple of weeks and Doug knows that. I've been sleeping in that parking lot. So, so then when I pulled into the first turn, and I kept going towards the second turn, and when you turned into the second turn, thinking I wasn't going that way, you had to speed up, right? No, I thought, me, all, I thought, I, when I saw you, that's when I sped away. You fucking avoided me. Dude, you're lying. I'm just fucked. I'm not, oh my god, Kaz, I'm not lying about that. I, I'm no, telling you the Derek, truth. when you fucking sped up past me, you intentionally avoided me. I was I was flying in the parking lot. I sleep all the way in the back. I swear to oh my god, and on, on my mother's life, Kaza, on my mother's life, I, it was coincidence. You on my mother's on my mother's life. You pulled it out. So why did you pull it after I did? Why did you drive it, into that parking lot after me? Kaza, it was coincidental. I, I on my mother's life. No, it on my it. mother's no, life. It wasn't. Now no, you think I'm lying about everything? I, I I'm not. Uh, okay. So you are you are telling the truth that that I was I was threatening you and I well like saying all those things to you that I was going to cause a scene but what I meant by cause a scene was like argue with you I did not mean to hurt you I that's not it was not intentional at all at all So then when I kept telling you to leave and you chose not to leave you because I was mad at I was mad I was Derek, just I was just mad I was arguing Derek, but I was not there to hurt you. You defending yourself is a lie. I you didn't have a broken nothing on your face. If I was fighting you, Derek. You would have been fucked up. You're not understanding me. I did not fight you. I restrained you the whole fucking time. Your tongue being a little bitten off because I put you in the choker hole because you wanted to fucking leave. I was trying to tell you to knock it off the lead. You don't understand that. You can lie all you want. Ask any man that I've ever been with when I was a piece of shit and beat on him. Your face, that's not no. If you know. No. Anybody that did I hit you? Anybody knows. Did I, did I hit you? Well, did you? That's besides the point, dude. But did you I'm not? I'm gonna tell you right now, as somebody that dealt with cases for 14 years, do yourself a favor. When she gets that position, get the fuck out of there. Walk the fuck away. Be a man and shut your fucking trap. Don't ever say anything. But if he defended himself, if I was attacking him, congratulations. If I attack him, what would happen? No, but I, if I attack him, you lie in every situation that is ever possible for you to have to send yourself in any fucking position with Kaza. Sorry. But he didn't defend himself because if he was not, if I was telling him to leave and not fighting him, I would have fucking hit him in the face. Would I not have punched him in the face? And he would have known. I didn't uh, do that. You wouldn't have woken up till the morning if she actually wanted you to. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's what I'm saying. He wants to act like he defended himself. That's a fucking lie. All I said to you the whole time was leave. Stop. I was holding you. Choke hold. Whatever the fuck it was. I never punched you. I never attacked you like that. Right. Ethan only jumped in because you fucking were on me. How about this, all right? Here's this for a situation. Derek, do me a favor. I'm sorry, I don't even know who's talking right now. This is Lance. L L Lance, nice to meet you. Legally. I, I, no, I met you, you before, and she, she talked a lot of shit about you, but I, I thought okay, that you were a nice guy. Don't speak over me. I thought you were Derek, a nice guy. Don't speak over me. Go ahead, you go ahead. You have sent me messages, and you know who the fuck I am. Do me a favor, don't speak over me. Go ahead. You know who the fuck I am, right? I, I know who you are now. Yeah, I am Kesley and King's father, Kaza's husband of 14 years, who has known her more than anybody else ever will. Don't speak over me about anything with her. And I will fucking take care of everything you need to. Like, literally, if you got a problem with her, you got a problem with me, because that is my mother's children. I'm telling you right now, anything and everything that you two think you you have is done. It is squashed. I don't have. She says she don't have shit to do with you. You can do yourself a favor right now. Expel the fucking shit you think you have. Any goddamn memory, any goddamn thought, anything you think you need to fucking say is done. Leave her the fuck alone as it sits right now. 
This is my wife. Legally, as it sits, literally, I will bury you in my fucking front yard, and there ain't nothing this state will ever fucking say about it. Don't call her again. You understand me, Derek? What, what do you mean? You're gonna bury? What do you mean, dude? Like, no. Why you would you say something like that? Understand me, Derek. Why would you? Cool. Draw the law. They know who I am. Do not contact Kaza ever again. You understand me? What do you mean? What are you? You're gonna kill me? Are you? Uh, dude, I'm trying to have a conversation with her. It's it's my friend's daughter. I, I'm I, I'm like at his house, like living there. Like and that's why I'm trying to have peace. I'm trying to talk this out. I don't know why it's being escalated by other people and saying they're gonna, you're gonna bury me. Why why would you say that? I'm trying to have peace. Hello? Hello?